Nima, I hear this term quantum gravity as something that's really important today. So let me tell you what I know and then help me to understand. I know that general relativity describes the gross structure of space-time, the curvature for the entire universe, and quantum mechanics is the, is the theory that helps us understand the very, very small of, of atoms and subatomic particles. And that these two massive concepts of understanding the world are not compatible when you bring them together, either in the center of black holes or at the origin of the universe. Infinities come up and everybody has trouble. So people want to try to integrate them. Is that right? That's, that's certainly part of it. Uh, um, uh, I prefer to describe it in a, in a somewhat different way, which really has exactly the same essence as, as, as what you said, um, but, uh, but highlights a little more uh, the sort of real intellectual challenge which is, which is involved. Uh, let me uh, remind you that, uh, that, that quantum mechanics already told us uh, itself, even without gravity, already told us something interesting, that if we wanted to probe what was going on at very, very short distances, we had to use very, very high energies. Okay, so that's, that's part of the, uh, um, of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. That's why if we want to probe what's going on at, uh, you know, distances a thousand times smaller than the proton, we have to beg taxpayers for billions of dollars <laughs> to build enormous accelerators to go to really high energies. And well, if we wanted to know what's going on at 10 to the minus 20 centimeters, that's, that's uh, even a thousand times smaller. We'd have to beg a lot more. We'd have to build an even larger accelerator. But still, there's nothing in principle that stops us from probing arbitrarily tiny distances uh, as long as we're willing to have uh, enough energy. That's all true in a world without, without gravity. Mm. Uh, but in a world with gravity, something very interesting happens. Um, uh, if I just back up for a second, uh, the idea of space and time is um, is uh, the most natural one in, in in physics. In fact, what is physics about if not describing uh, what happens to things in space as they move through time? Okay, so 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 the idea of of, of space time is intertwined uh, inexorably with what we mean by by physics itself. And uh, of course, the notion of space time has evolved a lot over the last. 400 years, Einstein taught, uh, uh, taught us that, that space-time was actually rather dynamical and that fluctuations in space and time were, uh, were really gravity. Um, uh, but still, it, it's, it's, its exact existence um, has, uh, was, was not questioned by, by, by general relativity. And um, also, if we didn't have gravity, quantum mechanics doesn't for force us to throw out the idea of space-time. But when you use the words quantum mechanics and gravity together, um, uh, you immediately see that space and time have got to break down, that, that, that space time can't be an exact concept and has got to be replaced by something, something deeper. Yeah, what does that mean? And well, so we can see this in, in a very simple thought experiment. If I just continue the, uh, if I, if I, if I continue the, uh, uh, what, what we're talking about a second ago, suppose I want to measure uh, just operationally measure what's going on in this little region of space. Well, the uncertainty principle tells me I've got to put a huge amount of energy in that little region of space, and then I can probe what is going on there. Well, suppose I want to just operationally probe what's going on in an even smaller region. The uncertainty pr principle tells me I've got to put an even larger energy in that smaller region of space. But what happens when you have gravity is that ultimately you put so much energy into such a oh. tiny region of space that, uh, that you collapse that little region of space into a black hole. Okay. Uh, this is one of the things that we know uh, must exist in, 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 in gravity. If you, put, if you put enough mass into a small enough region of space, enough mass or energy into a small yeah, region of space, it, it makes a black hole. Because energy and mass are because the same energy thing and mass through are the same e thing equals, via MC, equals squared. mc squared. Right, exactly. Right, right, exactly. Right. Okay, so, so, um, so when so you put all energy that energy, mass, you have the equivalent of, of, of mass, and that, and that makes your black exactly, hole. Oh, exactly. Oh, fascinating. Okay. And so, but... Uh, so, 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 so eventually, the amount of energy that you've got to s stick into the tiny region yeah. by the uncertainty principle becomes so large that it collapses, collapses that region into a black hole. <laughs> you can ask, uh, what energy or what distance does that happen? Mm. And, well, this is at a very tiny energy, uh, sorry, very tiny distance or very high, high energies. Energy. And that tiny distance and high, ene high energy reflects the fact that gravity is pretty weak. So you've got to put an enormous amount of mass or energy and put it in a really tiny distance to make a black hole. But those distances are called the Planck length the times are called the Planck time. The energies are called the Planck energy. So the Planck length is around 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. The Planck time is around 10 to the minus 43 seconds. 
that Planck energy is around 10 to the 19 times larger than the rest mass energy of a proton. Uh -huh. So that's around, uh, so all of those scales are, are some, uh, you know, they're around some 13, 14 orders of magnitude removed from what we're going to probe in directly in, uh, in, in experiments. Okay, so they're incredibly tiny distances, incredibly high, high energies. Nonetheless, this thought experiment is enough to tell us that if you're trying to operationally measure uh, a time difference smaller than 10 to the minus 43 seconds, a space separation smaller than 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, you can't do it. You were trying to probe that little region of space, and you make a little black hole instead. And the black hole makes it impossible for you to see at tinier distances. Now, what if you said, shoot, I made, a, I made a black hole. Well, let me try even harder. I'll put even more energy in. I'll go to even higher energy. What happens? You make a bigger black hole. It gets even harder to see what's going on at short distances. Okay? So this little thought experiment is enough to tell us that the ideas of space and time themselves don't operationally make sense when you're trying to probe distances and times shorter than the Planck length. So that's really what quantum gravity is about, to try to figure out what concepts have to replace space and time and what allows us to, to, to get sensible answers out of these kind of thought experiments. Does this mean that the probing is impossible or that something really breaks down in the fundamental reality of what space and time is? That is a wonderful <laughs> question. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's a really wonderful question because uh, it, uh, because similar questions uh, have been asked before when we've come up with similar sorts of uh, paradoxes before. For instance, when Heisenberg talked about his uh, uncertainty principle, he had a thought experiment of trying to probe the position yeah, and yeah, velocity yeah, of a yeah, particle at yeah. the same time. And he saw that any physical probe that you could set up, you could never measure the position and velocity simultaneously well enough. Now, even there, you could ask, well, is that reflecting something about the actual reality of what's going on? Or is it simply reflecting something about our operational way yeah, of yeah, measuring right. it? Um, and over and over again in the history of, of physics, we have uh, run into the idea that things that are operationally impossible to do probably uh, don't exist, uh, okay? So, 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 you know, uh, we're, so in, in making the statement uh, that I made before, I'm assuming that this historical trend is continuing <laughs> and the things that we can't give operational meaning to is a clue that, that they're not really, uh, they're not really a, a fundamental okay. so part if space of the description. And, so if space and time then break down at these levels, what then does that say about the search for quantum gravity? Because now it, may seem to be that space and time itself may be quantized. Exactly. I mean, it's, uh, so, 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 so quantum gravity, uh, the heart of quantum gravity and the hard part of quantum gravity uh, is to figure out what concepts replace the concepts of space and time. Uh -huh. So uh, there's been enormous progress in string theory, for example, in the last, uh, in the last 10, uh, in the last 10 years or so, with, with a good first example um, a very concrete and under control example where we understand the idea of emergent space in a in a in, in a very concrete way, hmm. so that there is a so that there is there is a sense in which space and gravity and everything emerge from more primitive building blocks which don't have gravity and don't have at least parts of space. Okay, uh, what we're still missing is an understanding of of what time emerges uh, of what time emerges from. But if we've learned anything from at least the lessons of special relativity, space and time shouldn't be treated too too differently from each other. But 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 we're still struggling with what the notion of emergent time should mean. So if we pull this together with uh, the search for quantum gravity, we understand now that we have to quantize space and time. What about the four fundamental forces, not just gravity, but electromagnetism and the, the weak force in the nucleus and then the strong uh, weak force that has de de uh, 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 um, de disintegrations and then the strong force that holds protons and gluons together in the nucleus. These four forces, which seem so disparate in so many ways, distances, energies, all sorts of things. Right. How does quantum gravity, uh, take all of this together and, and, and hope to give us a, a unified solution. Well, w w one of the things which is really wonderful um, uh, uh, and which happened in, uh, by the uh, 1970s is a realization that while the strong force, the weak force, and the electromagnetic force seem radically different um, uh, at, very, at, at large distances, um, that in fact uh, uh, the apparent very big difference between them is kind of a long distance illusion. Mm. And at short enough distances, uh, uh, they look very much the same. 
Uh, so, for, for example, a distance is around 10 to the minus 16 centimeters, so 100 times smaller than the proton. We have an excellent description of all of these interactions uh, in terms of what's known as the standard model of particle physics. And that description is a completely unified language for talking about all of these interactions. We talk about them in the same way. It's the same kind of mathematical formalism. The way the interactions are mediated look very similar. There are some technical differences between them, but they're really fundamentally, uh, they're, they're, they, they, they fundamentally look uh, 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 very similar to each other. And furthermore, uh, we understand that uh, as we extrapolate to very, very short distances, the strengths of all these interactions um, start also looking similar. And the distance scale at which uh, that similarity uh, really becomes quantitatively accurate is not far from where, uh, is not far from the Planck length. So um, while Einstein struggled for 20, 25, mm -hmm. 30 years of his life to find a unified theory for just gravity and, and electromagnetism, um, putting together everything we know about nature uh, makes that sort of uh, unification at a distance scale of around the Planck length seem quite, plaus quite plausible. 